Hello, it's Randy Rhodes. Here's a clip from our show, and go to randyrhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast. Mary had a little man, man, man. The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. The magnificent mosaic that is America. From Radio Beacon to Radio Beacon. Change has come to America. Believe me. Knock, knock. Who's there? It's a segment of your imagination. Turn up your mind. As part of the global jihad. Told ya. They want to change your religion. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. Oh, my God. Not going to happen. As part of the global jihad, And 51% of those polled agreed that Muslims in America should have the choice of being governed according to Sharia. You know what Sharia is? 51%. Sharia authorizes, and look, this is, I mean, it's terrible. Sharia authorizes such atrocities as murder against non-believers who won't convert beheadings, and more unthinkable acts that pose great harm to Americans, especially women. I mean, you look, especially women. He's a very Tough stuff. sick person. He is just bizarre. And then all weekend long, he had people on the TV defending him. Is not You can't say he's anti-Muslim. You can't say that the president's anti The president of the United States carries a megaphone louder than anyone mm-hmm. in the world, and arguably this president likes to use his. So it, because you're frustrated, why not remove any shadow of a doubt? I mean, during the campaign, as you know, as a candidate, the president called for a ban on all Muslims entering the United States. He said Islam hates us. This kind of language in the past uh, leads to these questions of why isn't the president now directly using that megaphone to condemn it? Well, then take the the words and put them in one category and take the (laughs) actions and put them in another. Something the president doesn't get hardly any credit for or any attention to is the work he's done in defense of religious minorities all around the world up to and including uh, Muslims in the Middle East. Are you um, kidding? Some of the religious minorities that are the worst oppressed in the Middle East are some of the ones that this administration has been doing, uh, going to great lengths to protect. So like I who? hear what folks say. say. Oh, Donald Trump said this during the campaign. Look at what we've done while we've been here. I don't what think anybody done? could say that, that the president is anti-Muslim. Well, no the, one could say that the president is anti-Muslim. Everyone can say that the president, even white supremacists can say that the president is anti-Muslim. It, they say it because they cheer that. We say it because we hate that. This is sick, okay? This is really sick, and it's all coming from this one group. It's all coming from this 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 heinous, ugly, anti-Muslim think tank headed by Frank Gaffney that can include in its membership Ted Cruz and Ben Carson and Janine Pirro and Steve Bannon, Stephen Miller, uh, uh, Kellyanne Conway, Lockheed Martin. Lockheed Martin has made huge donations to this uh, Center for uh, Security Policy, which is an anti-Muslim think tank. Uh, They have served on the board of CSP, Lockheed uh, um, executives have. Uh, The Washington Post has has done fact checks on this uh, think tank. They've called them a hack organization for its promotion of conspiracy theories about Muslim infiltration. The Brookings Institute criticized the work of the Center for Security Policy and similar organizations, saying they sell a lot of books and they scare the hell out of Americans, but their policy recommendations range from vague to downright harmful. Now, here are the actual stats, okay? This is the real deal on what is going on. With You can't ignore the words because the words just keep pounding at you and coming to you. I mean, the, the president with his Muslim ban, and do, do, I don't even know if you remember some of his rallies. Guys stood up and said, you know, America's got a problem, and it's called Muslims, and I just want to know, when can we get rid of them? And the president agrees with them. Let's start with this group right over here. Come on. Okay, this man, I like this guy. I walk on White Plains. Amen. Okay. Amen. We have a problem in this country. It's called Muslims. We know our current president is one. Oh, my you God. You know he's not even an American. We need this first certificate, this man. First but anyway, wow. we have training camps 
growing where they want to kill us. Mm -hmm. That's my question. When can we get rid of We're going to be looking at a lot of different things. And, you know, a lot of people are saying that, and a lot of people are saying oh my that God. bad things are happening out there. We're going to be looking at that and plenty of other things. But you can't say he's anti-Muslim, can you? I think everybody knows he's anti-Muslim. I think all the white supremacists love him because he's anti-Muslim. And I think, uh, you know, the people that, uh, you know, want him out of here uh, know he's anti-Muslim. This is a right-wing extremist environment that he operates in. And quite frankly, uh, hate crimes in this country have dramatically spiked. That is a fact. The Anti-Defamation League, they have a center on extremism. It tracks murders. It tracks murders perpetrated by all kinds of extremists, all kinds, echo extremists, echo terrorists, whatever you want to call those people. And it tracks all the motivations behind their violent attacks. And in 2018, they saw a spike in right wing extremist murders. Every single extremist killing from Pittsburgh to Parkland had a link to right-wing terrorism. Can I say that again? Every single extremist killing from Pittsburgh to Parkland had a link to right-wing extremism. I, 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 this man is literally tearing us apart, literally pitting one against the other because he's not gonna leave in 2020. And that's why, you know, Friday, he, uh, it, it, he was talking to Breitbart, oh my God. And he told Breitbart that, you know, he's, he, he, he says that the left wing is much more vicious, much more vicious than the right wing is, which by all statistics is patently false. However, uh, he said that the right wing takes it until they can't take it anymore. And by the right wing, he said, I've got the police, I've got the military, I've got the bikers. I'm not kidding. He said, so here's the thing. It's so terrible what's happening. You know, the left plays a tougher game. It's very funny. I actually think that the people on the right are tougher, but they don't play it tougher, okay? I can tell you, I have the support of the police, the support of the military, the support of the bikers for Trump. I have the tough people, but they don't play it tough until they go to a certain point, and then it will be very, very bad. Uh, I don't know who he's talking about. I'm ex-military. You know, the, the Iraq vets, uh, Iraq and Afghanistan vets against the war are not on his side. Vote vets are not on his side. I'm not on his side. A uh, lot of people in this audience are veterans. We're not on his side. You know, I mean, who is he talking about? Who is he talking about? Bikers for Trump. They're 70 years old, the bikers for Trump. Quick, everybody, get a microwave and, and, and gig their pacemaker. That's how we're going to defend ourselves, you know. Oh, my God, this man is sick. He's really twisted. There's something so wrong with him. I... Here are the statistics, okay? This is, this is the truth. George, unfortunately, hate is alive and well. According to the FBI, we've seen a dramatic spike in the number of hate crimes here in the U.S., an increase of about 17% when comparing 2016 to 2017. There were more than 8,000 victims and more than 6,000 suspects. 58% mm. of the suspects were motivated by race, 22% motivated by religion. George, mm. and there are some numbers that suggest that since 9-11, the attacks, uh, far-right radicals have been extremely active. In fact, between 2002 and 2016, far-right radicals were involved in nearly three-fourths of the fatal attacks here at home, though they killed slightly fewer people than Islamic radicals, this according to the GAO. And posing a tough challenge for law enforcement. It's an extremely tough challenge. How do you deal with this, George? There are so many, peop so many people using the Internet. When does hate turn into actual violence. You don't know when that's actually going to happen. So police are here and around the world have to depend on the community to tell them when they feel like hate speech is evolving into something more sinister. 
my God, did you hear those numbers? 58%. There were 8,000 victims. 58% of the perpetrators were motivated by race. 22% of the uh, uh, attackers were motivated by religion. A 17% spike in hate crimes since 2017. This was the fourth deadliest year on record for domestic extremist-related killings since 1970. The extremist-related murders in 2018 were overwhelmingly linked to right-wing extremists. Every one of the perpetrators had ties to at least one right-wing extremist movement. White supremacists were responsible for the great majority of the killings, which is typically the case. Deadly shooting sprees were a major factor in the high death toll. Five of 17 incidents involved shooting sprees that caused 38 deaths and injured 33 people. The perpetrator of one of 2018's deadly shooting sprees at a yoga studio in Tallahassee was connected to the misogynistic incel manosphere movement. You remember that uh, that guy Elliot Rogers, don't you? He was one of those. He was part of the incel manosphere movement. He went on a shooting spree in 2014 and also decided to uh, document it right before uh, as he sat in his car. This was one of the most chilling things I ever saw. Hi. Hi. Elliot Roger here. Well, this is my last video. It all has to come to this. Tomorrow is the day of retribution. The day in which I will have my revenge against humanity. Against all of you. For the last eight years of my life, ever since I've hit puberty, I've been forced to endure an existence of loneliness, rejection, and unfulfilled desires. All because girls have never been attracted to me. Very sick crap, man. This is incredible. And this is this is what, you know, the president is encouraging. This is what the president is actually talking. This is who he's talking to. This is what he's talking to. This is how he's talking to them. He's sitting there telling them that... Uh, that Muslims are a problem. And then after that man said Muslims are a problem, when my question for you is when can we get rid of them? He said, well, we're talking about a lot of things. We're going to do a lot of things, you know, because many people are saying this. Many people are. And then he stood up subsequently and started reading from this center for for whatever it is, the Frank Gaffney ridiculous group that almost everyone in his administration currently had worked for, creating these fake fake numbers about uh, you know Sharia law and that there's some uh, uh, Sharia onslaught and it's coming here and blah, blah blah and then he was asked to 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 denounce that man and he defended that man uh, he said Muslims are a problem okay that's what he said okay are they a problem you tell me and I say I don't see the people and I use it often that knocked down the World Trade Center going back to Sweden okay so he said Muslims are a problem. That was part of what he said. Well, I mean, can you make the case that it's been tough? And by the way, most Muslims, I know many, are great people. Just Yeah, and the ones that knocked down the World Trade Center are Saudi Arabians, who, by the way, today in the newspaper, uh, it looks like uh, Prince Salman didn't just kill uh, Jamal Khashoggi. Oh, hell no. He killed like a dozen other people, too. Anybody that disagrees with him, he just goes out and murders them. And this is his best friend, and this is Jared Kushner's best friend. So he, he invokes 9-11 all the time. He says he saw Muslims in New Jersey, uh, you know, celebrating the uh, downing of the world. That never happened. He talks about invaders, right, from the southern border by saying to you, oh, a lot of them were from the Middle East. Remember, they found prayer rugs in the desert. This is all a Snopes debunked uh, 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 urban myth. Never happened. He took it from a movie. A movie. But I swear, and he retweeted, remember when that Dutch boy was, uh, you know, being bullied and he said that those were two Muslims that were bullying, that he retweeted that, that was not true either. He says there's Middle Easterners in the caravan. He says Islam hates us. He said they're invaders. France is not France anymore, right? I mean, but you can't say he's anti-Islamic, right? Go to randyroads.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast.